So you're having a night in with friends and you decide to order a pizza. You're gonna get the biggest pizza available and then split the check evenly. But when the pizza guy comes, you realize that none of you have cash and he's not gonna split the check for you. So what do you do? Well, the answer is pretty simple for most of us. One of you pays for the pizza, everyone else transfers the money. This form of transaction is called peer-to-peer -peer transaction, and it's become increasingly popular in North America. Over the past 10 years, instances of peer-to-peer -peer transaction have gone up exponentially, but some have started to question if it's actually safe to use. This week's episode of Digital Tattoo's Digital Finance series is all about peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions are covered under the umbrella of e-commerce in Canada and simply involve the transfer of funds from one individual to another. That being said, the process how this actually works is incredibly opaque. PayPal, one of Canada's largest peer-to-peer -peer transaction vendors, says that it's the simplest way to send, receive, and request money from your family and friends. They also say that it has bank-level security. But is that really true? Coinciding with the rise of peer-to-peer -peer transactions has been a rise in transfer fraud. In April 2018, the New York Times reported that a payment system called Zelle, which was used by 18 banks in the United States, had been subject to mass transfer fraud. The PwC's Financial Crimes Unit says that one of the banks that was using Zelle had a 90% fraud rate in their client transactions. Despite all of that, Zelle said that the problem was under control. A little closer to home, CTV reported that in 2015, a Calgary couple had $20,000 stolen from their account by e-transfer fraudsters. So how do these breaches happen? Sometimes, criminals log into a service provider account and steal money themselves. Other times, victims are coerced into sending over their account information or have it stolen from them. Regardless of the popularity of the service that you're using, or its ties to traditional banking institutions, remember that all e-commerce needs to be approached cautiously. Even large banking institutions can fall prey to common fraud tactics. Follow these tips by the United States Federal Trade Commission. As with all digital experiences, a little caution never hurts. Until next time.